All right, careful, bro. One day when I was about 12 years old, we were flounder fishing and I was driving the boat and I like to look behind me and watch the wake. Driving this way, looking that way, and dad told me, look where I was going, not where I had been. Yeah, he meant in the boat that day, but I really took that to heart. Ever since then, I just always started making goals down the road, things I wanted to do in life. And I had three things I wanted to do, and I've done all three of them. I wanted to be a professional cyclist, I did that. I wanted to be a professional chef, I did that. And I wanted to be a bird hunting guide, and I'm, I'm doing that. <laughs> I, honestly, just to do this as long as I can and, and do a good a job doing it as I can. Not perfect at it, I learn every day at the end of the hunt. I always ask people what I can do differently. I ask, sometimes you don't wanna hear the answers when you ask questions like that, but generally most people say just to remember to slow down a little bit. I've been known to walk a little fast in the woods. So. <laughs> hey, I don't waste time. We don't, we don't have time for that. We got a busy schedule today. Come on. Nice shot. Uh, I believe that's an adult male. That's right. Pretty small. Yep, small bird. That's a good one to take. Nothing wrong with that. I, I love being in the woods. I can't imagine doing anything else now. It's just, it's fantastic. There are days when the weather's bad or something like that, it seems a little bit more like a like an actual job, but it still beats anything I could think of doing. Well, I started guiding 15 or 20 years ago, part-time, holidays, vacation days, things like that. But full-time now is six seasons. Uh, I love taking people out and I love showing them the birds, showing them the, the specific habitats they, they like, uh, what, letting them see the dog work. I, I take great pride in my dog's abilities, and, and I like for people to see that. Um, I don't shoot much anymore, so I really enjoy watching young people shoot their first bird, or even older people shoot their first bird. I've had all the way up into their mid-80s shoot their first woodcock ever. And it's, it's exciting. It's a bucket list bird for people, and to be able to help them, it gives me a thrill too. So I, I, I take great happiness and watching other people be happy hunting. <laughs> well, I start off the season by going to Pine Ridge Grouse Camp in northern Minnesota. I guide for Jerry Havel from opening day, which is somewhere in the middle of September. I guide every day and through the generally the first weekend of November. It's about 45 days of guiding. I come back down to North Carolina and get a little rest wash clothes, that kind of thing. And then we start with the grouse in the mountains of North Carolina and Virginia up until mid-December when the North Carolina woodcock season opens. And once it opens here, I am generally just guide woodcock through the end of January. So all told, I'm in the woods close to 200 days a year. Uh, I pointed woodcock last year every month out of the calendar except for June. <laughs> I grew up hunting with my dad and he, uh, we had labs, beagles, and bird dogs, English setters and English pointers. When I was growing up, it was okay to ride in the back of your parents' car, and by back, I mean the trunk. So when we would go training, dad would put me in the labs in the trunk of his sedan and we'd drive out to the training field and we'd all pile out. We'd start off in the goose impoundment across the street from the duck club. And when we were doing that, we could count the coveys waking up, doing their morning covey calls. And we'd stay out there for a little bit and then walk back across the street, change clothes, and go bird hunting the rest of the day. And by bird, we'd quail, wild quail in eastern North Carolina. And we would, we had a couple different loops from the house and we would leave from there. And along those, we would also put up plenty of woodcock in the woods and edges and, and ditch banks. So we started at an early age loving the little birds. Yeah, one time we were quail hunting when I was growing up, and 
We had a little English setter, and she was an older dog, good dog. And she bumped a covey of quail, ran right smack into it. And I fussed at her. And Dad looked at me and said, well, can you smell them? And I said, no. And he said, well, neither could she. Quit yelling at her. After a full day of quail hunting, we would get back to the house, and I would sneak out back again with my little setter, Chip, and, and, and work back through the edge of the woods and back into the little swamp that was behind us and, and find a couple of woodcock right before, right before sunset. And it was just me, just the dog, and just one bird. I enjoyed that. I liked to watch them in the trees. I love to be in the forest. I love to look up through the trees and see the sun shine on them. And part of the woodcock excitement for me is just always being in the dense forest. I love that. And, and they're a special bird to work. Uh, any dog can really point a woodcock. They rely on their camouflage so well, they put up with a lot of stomping around, so to speak. And, but I love the pace of woodcock. I love to see a beautiful dog pointing a woodcock with a beautiful point. And, and you can take that in. You have a chance to finish a conversation or or you know, load the gun, walk through the woods with the gun unloaded, and things like that that a, that a grouse, you just don't really have that time. A dog points a grouse, you gotta get there. The bird's gonna go up, you know, it's, it's exciting. And it's a big challenge, and I, and I love the challenge of pointing grouse. I really do, I love that. But with that being said, I love the pace and the relaxed atmosphere of a good woodcock shoot. Well, all, all the setters go date back as late as early as the late 1400s, and, and the Gordon setters are no different. You got the English, the Irish, and the Gordon is named after the Gordon Castle. It is the Scottish version, but it's named after the Gordon Castle. And and it was bred. I tell people they're the original grouse dogs because they were bred to hunt the red grouse of Scotland. And and the the fourth Duke of Gordon, reportedly, and you know, I guess with DNA we could prove it right or wrong, but reportedly bred in the black and tan hound for the quality of nose which also cemented in the black and tan coloration. He also is reported to have uh, bought a, a border collie from one of his, his tenants on his estate who had a, a, a famous border collie for pointing and setting grouse. He would set grouse, so, so he, he bought her and bred her into the line. It, true or not, I don't know. I have one that circles like a border collie. He always circles counterclockwise. But there, like I said, the work ethic is, is possibly even with a little bit of that hound bred in back in the 15, 1600s is a good possibility. I love watching puppies learn. I love watching their first point. I love watching their first bump. I don't care. I, like I said, that's all they've ever smelled. Uh, learning to work a bird, learning, okay, that was too close. I think puppies learn a whole lot more by making mistakes than by doing it right. They got lucky they did it right. But if they make a mistake and you correct that mistake instantly, they learn to do it better the next time. That's how they're learning. And I love to watch them learn it. I love to see them develop i love to see them back and on site their first season i only have spring puppies so i can get them in the woods that first fall five six months old in the fall and and really immersing them into the world uh, they learn the hard way by driving a lot of miles in the truck and running a lot of days in the woods but it's also develops them into very good natural wild bird dogs you need birds to make a bird dog has to find birds Wild birds just don't put up with mistakes like uh, pen raised birds. Uh, you know, a pen raised bird's pigeon or uh, a quail is going to be very complacent to mistakes from a puppy. And if it catches them, I mean, you know, it's not the end of the world, but I don't want my puppies learning to catch birds. And if I'm going to ban woodcock over them, they definitely can't. They have to pass the test. And, and with that, puppies that learn to respect the wild birds and back off of them and give them the distance required at a very early age will just do nothing but develop better. And, and as a guide, if I can't get my puppies in the woods early, they're just going to sit around all winter while I'm guiding. So I, I, I get them in the woods early and get them to where they can work wild birds early. Good girl. Oh, good dog. Could have brought it all the way. Good girl. Blue here, blue, blue. Come here, hey, hey, good dog, good dog. Good. This is what we're hearing. It's a bird. We shoot it. <laughs> you use this and you let the shot That's come it. out of it, and you try to make it fall. Good dog. Thank you. So my son, when he was young, we lived in Virginia, and I took him grouse hunting, you know, and he's first starting to carry his gun. And the dog pointed up on the hillside. And I said, just stand out here in the open. I said, I go up on the hillside, hear three birds getting up. And one of them comes shooting down the hill and cuts down the trail. And my son, 10, 10 years old, standing there going, Dad, there goes one. 
I said, point with the gun. <laughs> you're, not your, you're not your finger. I never let him live that down. I said, you'll never get a better opportunity than that, standing flat-footed on a forest road with a big grouse sailing right down it. Yeah, yeah. Is this a male bird? Or? Never even thought to shoot at it. It's probably too. a female with that big beak. But. I was trying to remember what you were saying. Yeah, night. longer. That is an adult hen. That's okay. an adult hen. There's no, you can see right through there where the... The, the modeling like that would be on both sides of the feather for a, a juvenile. I got you. And just with the, the, the bill size, you can think for it. I'm very old fashioned and I read there's a Gene Hill story called The Woodcock Gun. It was about an old, an old greener shotgun made for somebody he assumed was a, a woodcock hunter, a short barrel gun, but he, he pictured the old man having a horse drawn carriage with a, a big headed Gordon setter. And I said, well, that sounds like the dog for me. I like old fashioned things. So I, I found my first one. And like I said, the rest is history. So. The intelligence, their quality of sense of smell is, is beyond any other dog I've seen. They have a fantastic memory. You don't have to train them every day. I train my puppies and then from then on, they're, they're pretty set. I don't have to keep retraining them. Their work ethic is amazing. They don't want to stop. I mean, when we were just out through here, it's just, just the way they keep looking and looking, they never quit. And once they get a little whiff of a bird, they don't stop until they find that bird. They know it's there, they will find the bird.